Next is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Seventh chapter, text number five. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on November 1st, 1975, in Nairobi, Kenya. Besides this inferior nature, O mighty armed Arjun, there is a superior energy of mind, which are all living entities, who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe. Apariyam tastanyam prakidin vidyame param jiva bhutang mahabaho jayidam dharjati jagat. So, the gross and subtle material energy uh, are already explained in the previous verse. The children must go. Hmm. <coughs> so, the bhumi rapo nalo bayu khangamano buddhiri vatra. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. These are all material energies. It has nothing to do uh, with the spiritual energy. And because it is not spiritual energy, it is called apara, inferior. Uh, just like in our body, there are some superior part and some inferior part. You have got the brain, that is superior part, but there are other parts where we pass tool and urine. Everything is part of my body, but the position is different, superior and inferior. Similarly, everything is God, sattvam khalidam brahma, but still there must be distinction between the superior and the inferior. Although it is Brahma, still for practical use there is superior and inferior distinction. Those who do not make this distinction foolishly, they are called nidvises body, impersonalist, without any varieties. But there are varieties actually. Uh, although the body is one, there is no doubt about it. Uh, but different parts of the body are considered as superior and inferior. This is called achinta bhedabhet philosophy. Simultaneously one and deeper. As part of the body, the anas or the genital, it is part of the body, and the brain is also part of the body. Both of them are part of the body, but still brain is superior than the energy. So in this way, and upon this philosophy, it is called achinta bheda bhed. Bheda means distinct, and abheda means one. We should not take one part of the philosophy, that everything is one. No, everything is one. That is a fact, and still they are different. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita in the thirteenth chapter. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagat abhakta murtina. In my impersonal form, I am all pervading. Jagat abhakta. But masani sarvabhutani, everything is maintained by me. Masani sarvabhutani. Nahang teshu avasthu. But I am not there. It's like the jail department is also part of the government. But the president does not live in the jail. Masani Sarvabhutani, if the President says, says 
that the jail department is also my department. That does not mean that president has to live in the jail. It is a gross example. Similarly, Krishna, God is everywhere. Uh, not everywhere. His energy is acting everywhere. The superior energy and the inferior energy. This is the material world. Combination of two energies. Uh, just like this body. Your body, my body, everyone's body. What is this? The combination of these two energies. The superior energy and the inferior energy. The in, inferior energy, bhumi in upon alabhaya, the gross body. Earth, water. This gross body means earth, water, air, and ether. And then the subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego. These eight combinations. So this is not actually I. And so, therefore, this is apara, inferior. But what I am, that is Uti. That is explained here. Jiva Bhuta. Beyond these two gross and subtle energies, there is another superior energy. Aparayam itastu anyang. Anyang means another. <coughs> itastu uh, aparayam itastu anyang prakriti, another prakriti energy is there. Vidhime param, that is superior. Who, what is that? Jiva Bhuta, that living being, which is within the gross and subtle body, uh, that living being. So the modern scientists, they cannot understand It is clearly stated, distinction between the inferior energy and the superior energy. Both of them are energies, and Krishna is the energetic. It is everything coming from Krishna, energy. That the heat and light come from the fire. The fire is distinct from the heat and light. Eko desha sthita shagne josna mistarina jatha parasa brahmana shakti tathayva akilam jagha. Just like fire is there. We can see, if we study what about God has created, if we simply study, you become a philosopher. Just like the sun is situated in one place every day we can see. It is agni, fiery, substance. So heat and light is distributed. And through the heat of the light, heat and light of the sun, all other planets are created. And the vegetation and all products have been coming out. Without sunlight you cannot do anything. Heat and light, it is essential. Similarly, the whole material world, or any world, spiritual world, they are manifestation of the supreme, energetic. The energies are coming. Uh, energy, you have got also energy, I have got my energy. You cut your hair, automatically the hair will again grow. You know what is that energy? But there is energy, otherwise. A dead man, save, will not grow. Will not grow anymore here. Yeah. Finished. Uh, but a living man, because he has got that energy, so today you save, again tomorrow you save. This is called inconceivable energy. Even I do not know what is that energy, you do not know what is that energy. Uh, we can talk foolishly, some bombastic words. This sells this, this and that and so many things, but it is not in our control. Uh, <coughs> so these two energies, material energy and the spiritual energy, one is superior and one is inferior, they are working within this world, mixture. And the spiritual world means there is no material energy, simply spiritual energy. There is no material energy. Everything is spiritual energy. There is no material body. There is no uh, this bhumi 
the land in the spiritual world is not land like this land. Chintamani prakara sadma su kalpa vikhala khabriti su suravi ravi palantam lakshmi sahasa sata samrama sebu manam govindam adipurisam samaham. The Brahma Sangita. This is the description of the spiritual world. Chintamani prakara sadma su. There are also buildings. But that building is not like this building, bricks and stone. Chintamani. Touch a stone. Chintamani prakara. Prakara means house. Sadmasu. Kalpa. There are also trees. But those trees are spiritual trees. How? The kalpa brikha. Here go to a mango tree, you get mango. But there to go any tree. You ask for mango or any fruit or anything, it will be so. That we cannot imagine. That how one tree can supply everything. Yes, yeah, that can. Because they are spiritual. Spiritual, just like my disciple, if I say, bring mango. So, you go anywhere and bring mango. Because he is spirit soul, living. Uh, but if I ask this pillow, bring mango, it will not be possible. <laughs> that is the distinction between material and spiritual. Uh, and this food is there trying to prepare spiritual energy by combination of material energy. They see their foolishness. Uh, they are trying to create living force by chemical combination. So, therefore, sometimes we say, I do not say, Krishna says, a mura, rascals. This is not possible. You cannot manufacture life by combination of material chemical. It is not possible. <coughs> Here it is said that, apara, uh, <coughs> material ingredients, chemical is also material ingredients. You cannot produce. It is a different thing. Jiva Bhutang Mahava. How it is superior? Jaya. Dharjati Jagat. Because this spiritual energy is there, therefore this world is important. Otherwise it has no value. In Africa, because the Europeans or Indians, they came here, they are spiritual energy. The Africans are also spiritual energy. This is an example. But the, the advanced nation, they know how to utilize things, uh, the matter. Therefore it is superior. The spiritual energy, living soul, knows how to utilize this matter. Jaya idam dharjati jagat. Jagat, this world is made of material energy. But the spiritual energy, the living entity, he knows how to utilize this material energy. He knows how to utilize earth by making brick and making lime, and then they can construct a nice house. We control. Controller is the spiritual energy. Therefore it is called param, superior energy. This is also energy. But these so-called scientists, they are making Material energy and spiritual energy the same. They have no brain to distinguish. Yet we have to understand from Krishna. Therefore Krishna's instruction is so important. If you don't take Krishna's instruction, then in spite of our so-called higher advancement of education, we remain simply mura, raska. Raska. Mura means raska. Namāna duśkita nam mūrha prapaddhante narādhamā. Those who are not aware of the spiritual energy and the material energy, they are called mūrhās. Then if you understand what is spiritual energy, then you search out that where from this, both of the Krishna says, both of them are coming from me. But if you understand the superior energy, uh, spiritual energy, then it will be possible to understand what is Krishna. Hmm. Krishna is 
ఫుల్ స్పిరిచువల్ ఎనర్జీ సచ్చిదానంద విగ్రహం ఈశ్వర పరమ కృష్ణ సచ్చిదానంద విగ్రహం అనాది రాది గోవింద సర్వ కారణ కారణం సో దిస్ ఈజ్ ది ఫస్ట్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ టు ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ది స్పిరిచువల్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ కృష్ణ హెస్ బిగన్ ఫ్రమ్ ది వెరీ బిగినింగ్ ఇన్ ది సెకండ్ చాప్టర్ దట్ ది స్పిరిచువల్ ఎనర్జీ ఈజ్ విత్ ఇన్ దిస్ బాడీ దేహి నస్మిన్ యథా దేహి కౌమారజో మనం గరా తథా దేహాంతర ప్రాప్తి ధీరస్తత్వ నమీయతి so there are many evidences in the vedic literature that uh, the spiritual energy is different from the material energy and if you understand a spiritual energy then you can understand what is god uh, because spiritual energy is the sample of god sample of god krishna uh, says in the bhagavad gita that mumai vaang sa here it is say jiva bhuta what is the jiva bhuta he is jiva bhuta the living entity mama eva angsa that my part and parts my new particle of me just like father and the son son is part of the father bodily not spiritually spiritually he is part of pushna and materially he is part of the body of the father uh, so we are not talking of the material that is going on of course but this understanding bhagavad gita is completely spiritual understand uh, so this jiva bhuta uh, that is controlling the material nature that if you ask what is this material spiritual energy a living entity that is already explained is still further it is said in the 15th chapter that these spiritual energies the jiva bhuta mama eva angsha jiva bhuta ah krishna says this jiva bhuta living entity that my part and part that means if you try to understand what is this living entities then it is being part and parcel you can understand god just like a big volume of rice boiling you take one rice and you press it in the hand you can understand the whole rice pot is now ready similarly if you thoroughly understand this uh, spiritual entity <coughs> you can understand the what is god just like you take a, a drop of ocean water and analyze it chemically uh, the combination then you can understand what is the whole sea what it is very easy uh, at least you can understand composition <coughs> so if you study human nature whatever there is that is also there in god but that is perfect and unlimited and we have got all these chemical qualities uh, uh, very minute quantity and in the material contact it is imperfect so if you become liberated from the material bondage then you become perfect you can understand that i am as good as god but god is great i am very very small that is self reality that is self reality you do think i am as good as god that is your foolishness you are as good as god by quality but quantity you are not as great as god this is self reality that was hasto said that if the minute quantity of spiritual spark would have been equal to the supreme whole then how he has come under his control this is reason we are under control uh, in the material atmosphere we are fully under control but when you are spiritually free still we are under control 
because God remains the great and we remain the small. Therefore, in the spiritual world, there is no disagreement that God is great and we are small. There is no disagreement. That is spiritual world. And the material world means God is great, we are small. There is disagreement. That is material. Try to understand the distinction between material world and spiritual world. The living entity is very minute particle of God. But in the spiritual world, everyone is aware of his position. The living entities, they know what is my position. I am a small particle of God. Therefore, there is no disagreement. Everything is going on nicely. Here, in this material world, he is actually the small particle of God, but there is disagreement. He is falsely thinking that I am as good as God. This is material life. And liberation means when we are free from this wrong conception of life, that is liberation. Liberation means, therefore, all the bhaktas who have basically accepted that God is great, I am small, uh, very small particle. Therefore, uh, as this small such the great, my real duty is to serve God. This is liberation. This is liberation. Therefore, every bhakta who has taken to this principle that God is great, I am very small, I have to I have to uh, render service to the great. That is nature. Uh, everyone is going to the office, to the factory, to the work. What is this? But going to serve the greater. Otherwise he might stay at home. Uh, why he is going to the factory, to the office? This is the nature. That small serves the great. The God he is the greatest. Then what is your wisdom? To serve him. That's all. This is natural position. He in the material world, he is going to serve somebody else from somebody else for his bread. He still he is thinking, I am God. Just see what kind of God is. This rascal is thinking that he is God. <laughs> if he is driven away from the office, he will not get his bread and he is God. This is material. Everyone is thinking, I am God. Therefore, they have been called Nuras, rascals. They do not surrender to God. Namanga duskitanam mura prapadanti naranama. Maya apuritagyana. Apuritagyana. His real knowledge is taken away. He does not know that he is small, God is great. His business is to serve God. This knowledge is taken away. Maya Apuritagyana. Hasari Bhavamasya. This is the time. And you can understand by the one symptom, just like pressing one rice from the whole pot of the rice, you can understand the rice is quite all right. Similarly, by one symptom you can understand who is a rascal. What is that? Namam Prabhupada. He is not a devotee of Krishna, he is a rascal. That's all. That's all. This is our conclusion. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.